music, motivation, and positively obnoxious. That's me. It's the Tony Gebhardt Show! Hey guys, this is the Tony Gebhardt Show. Welcome back for another episode. Clearly you haven't gotten sick of me yet, which is a big bonus, and I feel so grateful of that. I've got a really good friend of mine, Precious Perez, amazing musician, president of recording artists and music professionals with disabilities, R-A-M-P-D.org. She's got a new song coming out this coming Friday, but by the time that you do hear the episode, the song will already be out. Precious, what's up? Welcome. Hey, <laughs> great to be here. Hi, <laughs> I, I know. I'm really glad that we could finally do this. This is just a real treat and a privilege for me since you're a good friend and uh, a mentor in some ways. I, I don't think I've ever told you that. You know, just watching, no, wow. watching your Facebook <laughs> posts and just seeing some of the things that you do um, with Shane and by, uh, by your own merits. You know, it's influential, especially to me as somebody, you know, who's out in the workforce, who's doing music as well. So it's really just such a huge blessing to see other blind musicians or just people in general who have these similar situations take it and own it and make it their own you know thank you for that i appreciate it of course yeah (laughs) so my goodness gracious i mean what's going on like what's been happening lately with you let's let's dig into it a little bit i know that you recently got nominated for a music award is that correct down in kentucky yeah so i was nominated for four uh kentucky latin music awards and i ended up winning best song 2023 um so that was really exciting (laughs) look at that and she she sounds humble as ever too so you know there's not a egocentric bone in that body (laughs) Nah, we don't do that around here man no egos Mm -hmm. don't get you many places no 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 well congratulations on that again it's just incredible but aside from just talking about the career you know i want to talk about you a little bit and really get into this now you you are visually impaired as well yes i am how long have you been blind i have been blind my entire life so i have retinopathy of prematurity so i was born two and a half months early which means that my eyes weren't fully developed and my retinas were detached and they had to give me so much oxygen to sustain my life that my eyes weren't able to develop fully. And so I remember full and complete darkness when I was younger. Then maybe when I was like two or three, because I had like five operations done on my eyes when I was really little because they were trying to see if they could restore anything. Mm. And then I woke up from that surgery, the last one that I remember. Um, with light perception in my left eye. So they were able to restore light perception to my left eye, but my right eye is essentially dead. It's just kind of sitting there, you know, gathering Idle. calcium deposits. Uh, idly, <laughs> not paying rent. No, we got that. Yeah, you know, just, just <laughs> hanging out in my face. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'd have kids walk up to me and be like, oh, you look scary. You look weird. <laughs> and, you know, I'm... Um, hey man i'm sorry I, I don't know what to do about that but i mean i think it's cool i'm there sure they look they look different but they don't look scary it's not like um you know we're not to the point where it's uh infected or anything and i have to get it removed because if that was the case it would not be in there so <laughs> right, right exactly yeah <laughs> now I, I can relate uh, a little bit to you know just the eyes not working in general um i, I lost my sight completely when i was nine um, but, uh, as far as keeping the eyes that, that, uh, the only eye that I still have left is my right one, my left one. They had to oh, take wow. Out. Yeah. But that was crazy. No, and it's, it's actually mesmerizing to me to meet somebody else who has, um, ret- uh, retinopathy prematurity <clears throat> because it's, it's so interesting to really talk about the perception of the visual cortex, right? Not to get all super super scientific but when you really think about it as blind people we're constantly thinking and using neurons in our brains in different ways since we cannot perceive what's going on with the visual cortex right so let me ask you this question since you never had the true perception of visual you know of visuals you had light perception you were developed that but when you play music and i always love these answers when you play music what do you see when you're playing music or when you're singing? Do you have an imagery or some form of 
mental imagination that guy can I've walk developed away. a sort of imagery um, throughout my training. Um, so when I first started singing, I just I was just m- mimicking what I heard from my favorite artists and things. And so when I started getting formal training, I realized, oh, wow, I wasn't breathing correctly and I wasn't doing this and that correctly. And so some of the things that I remember um, when I first started learning these techniques was, okay, when you're breathing, imagine that your head is like a pumpkin on a stick and you're just, it's being held up straight and it's not necessarily stiff or anything, but that your posture is straight and your shoulders are back. And then when you breathe, it's like when you're letting out the air and controlling the breath, it's like blowing out a candle because wow. you're engaging all of your diaphragm muscles. And so I've developed a lot of this imagery based on the things that my voice teachers would say to paint the visual for me in a way that I could understand and contextualize. Mm-hmm. Sure. So it's actually been very, very cool to like uh, associate the feeling of doing that correctly mm-hmm. with the image that they gave to me to try and visualize so that I could feel it internally and recognize it. Wow, I love that. No, that's that's huge. A choir director of mine um, from high school kind of had a similar process, except you know when it comes to going up and down your scales to really connect each note together, it's like going up and down a slide. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, you know, just having that visual that you can connect to. So that's that's really fascinating. That's and now you you teach too, don't you? I do. Yes, um, I you, currently teach at a preschool every week, and so I do music enrichment with the little. I call them my babies because <laughs> <laughs> they're three and four, Aww. and we do a lot of like musical games, and it's based around this um, approach of just approaching music with imagination and with wonder, and really doing activities like steady beat and um, you know singing and scales and all those things, but with activities that engage them that they can relate to and dance around to using nursery rhymes and puppets and all these like little stories and fun stuff and it's it's honestly a joy to watch them uh develop their little voices and like now they they remember the routines and so like i'll be like all right what are we gonna do next and they're like i want john the rabbit and i have this rabbit puppet that you know, he eats all the vegetables and we have to ask him, did you eat them? And he'll nod his head, but then he'll shake his head uh, at me and nod it at them when I turn my head to look away so that they're like, he's lying! He's lying! (laughs) And then we sing his John the Rabbit song and they have to do like the call and response. So I'll be like, oh, John the Rabbit! And they go, oh, yes! And so it's just like this, there's so many things like that that really engage them. It's teaching them, you know how to clap in time and you know we sing our hello song and it teaches them steady beat and then they're also singing and they're also just associating music with joy and self-expression and it's just so much fun i'm sure that honestly like every day you come home from doing that you're probably like "Ah, this is this is my life and i love it yeah like i do it (laughs) i used to actually full-time teach at the preschool like as a full-time teacher but I truly, I quickly realized that um, because of the, just the inaccessibility of the lesson plans and things, I was, there were only certain things I could do. Um, and there wasn't going to be room for me to grow in that position. And I had other opportunities coming up. So I was like, I don't want to just not come here anymore, but I can't do this particular thing. Right. And so they're like, well, we can give you two hours every week. And you can come and do music with them. And I obviously said yes. <laughs> so, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that's so interesting, you know, really talking about growth. One of the things that has become very repetitive on this podcast with a lot of guests is job exploration, um, you know, advocacy and the employment, uh, but also just some of the struggles that really go along with it. And you know, identifying room for growth is a huge thing that I don't think a lot of people, especially in the vocational stages, 
uh, the voc rehab stages of it, you know, that's not what they're thinking about. Because they're thinking about, I need mm-hmm. to get money, I need to get a job, I need to be able to pay for rent, you know, just all the basics and necessities. Right. But, you know, once we really get into a job space, mm-hmm. you know, those first few years are essential, right? Those are the years of development and really finding our feet. But after that, you know, do you do you have a plan for growth? Do you want to up your salary? Do you want more hours? Do you, right. you know, so I, I commend you, you know, in a lot of ways for having the strength to really advocate for yourself in that sense, because in a lot of ways we have to, especially while we're young, yeah. while we're moving forward, you know, it's, it's really important. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, we've definitely, it's been a journey because I've had, you know, regular nine to fives. I've had this and that. Now I'm, I, quickly realized like no I need to be self-employed I have to be able to do the things that are going to propel my career and be able to advocate for my worth and then also have some part-time gigs that are going to be sustainable income while that's growing and so yeah you know it's it's very it's a very individual process as far as what works for people and what doesn't but it's something you come to realize and it's like yes we do need money we do need to make sure we take care of ourselves and can pay for our bills and and all of those things but also you need to make sure that you're happy with what you're doing because if you're not it's going to bleed into everything else that's true that's very very true i tell you what you know what i look back i look at my resume from time to time and really just reflecting on some of my first first couple of jobs and one of my first jobs was being a park attendant and I had did it for maybe two hours a day, three days a week. And I would just walk around smoking cigarettes, blasting music, cleaning shacks, and like uh, all these little venues uh, at these county parks. And as fun as it was, and how, you know, just being expressive and being myself, it was a lonely job. And it was, yeah. that's all I was doing, right? That's all there was to it. It's like, okay, where's the worth in all this, right? So eventually right. you got to say, okay, I need to move up. We need to take that next step. But that's hard, especially in a world where, you know, we have to consistently advocate, advocate, advocate. And, you know, I'll ask you this question here momentarily, but when it comes to accessibility to the workplace and knowing how to advocate for yourself for those promotions, for those opportunities of residual income, you know, as blind people, especially and people with disabilities in general, you know, there there is a margin that is pretty small for that success right now, just based on statistics alone. So when you really look at it, my question for you, as uh, as somebody who's really defied those odds and those stats, what would you say is the secret sauce? I think the biggest thing is drive. Thrive. Drive and resilience because... This is how we steal the Krabby Patty formula, it's, my friends. <laughs> yes! We steal the Krabby Patty formula! Oh, man! That's my favorite! Oh! I didn't tell you. I got a SpongeBob pocketbook. And oh, you did? I walk around with a SpongeBob pocketbook now, so that's oh, a thing. Oh, what a class. Um, and my AirPods case is SpongeBob, so... I approve. Yeah. Very this good. is... I am, for those of you who don't know, I'm fully obsessed with Spongebob. It is my childhood. It is, like, the thing that I still just get pull, gravitate towards <laughs> from my childhood. So, um, references all day long. But I really do think that, um, you know, you can have the skills to advocate and you can develop those. And those can be learned and taught. Um but it's really your own self-awareness of what you want and the drive to be able to push through all of the obstacles that you're going to have to overcome to get there. Mm -hmm. Because truthfully, it's exhausting advocating all the time on top of, you know, being your own boss on top of this and that and the other thing in my case. And, you know, the thing that keeps me going is this is what I love to do. This is, the life that I want to live and this is how I'm going to get there and working really hard and continuing to kind of keep focus and drive in that direction is what keeps the momentum. Right. And would you say mentors are important? Oh, absolutely. Um, 
that's another thing. Um, you know, I can't take credit for getting where I am without the people that I've been lucky enough to call mentors um, or the people that have given me advice or given me a chance or like, you know, you, you truly never do get anywhere alone. Um, and it really does take a village and I'm just very, very grateful and blessed for the friends and the family and the mentors that I've been blessed to have in my life because not everybody has access to that. And so, you know, that's something I recognize resources are a big thing. And while I don't have access to a lot of, um, resources at the moment, um, in a certain regard, uh, the resources I do have are the connections and the relationships that I've been able to build. And so those are very, very important and, um, something to really be grateful for. Now you say something that's almost like a light bulb in so many ways, because people think resources and networking are two different things, but in some aspects, I think they're one and the same because, yeah. right? Because when you think about it, it's like, okay, you've created a LinkedIn profile that's fantastic, or you know, you were able to create a resume that's fantastic, or you have a website where you can host um, the materials that you're freelancing or whatever the context may be. But what about the informational interviews that you're having with professionals in your field? What about the connections and uh, sit downs or Zoom calls or coffee appointments that you're having with these individuals who are in the position that you want to be in? Um, right. You know, those are <clears throat> I can't tell you how often I've, I've reflected on moments like that to being able to get to where I am. Right. Because four or five years ago, I was couch surfing. And now it's like, you know, able to hold down a great job, have a wonderful wife. Like all these things didn't happen just because I said, I'm going to do it. Is because I had people who believed in me, right? And so when you exactly. look at you, <coughs> excuse me, being able to win this incredible music award, being able to get married, being able to release the music that you have, being a part of the Grammys last year. Was that this year or that last year? I'm trying to remember. Last year, this year and last year. Okay. I mean, right there. Being able to, you know, walk the red carpet at the Grammys and, you know, uh, just defy these things it comes from a support system. You know, people who believe in us enough to say, hey, this is where you need to go. Go get there. Yep. And it's that push. I mean, that's just so fucking cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am amazed literally of every single person that I am privileged to call a friend. And you're one of them. It is, just, it is just fantastic. This is wild. It's wild. I always tell Shane, I'm like, man, it's amazing the the friends that we have and the talent in the rooms we're in. It's 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 wild. <laughs> I know. It, it absolutely is. Well, and for those who don't know, Precious and I are part of a, a, a co-op sort of um, community uh, radio network called Venom, Venom FM. And uh, it's it's just a, a family of DJs and content creators and lovers of entertainment. And, you know, we've we've been going strong for four years this year. Isn't that crazy? Wow, has it really been that long? I believe that's four years. Man, that's I know. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, where did the time go? I don't know, but I tell you, the whatever we're doing, it works, you know? Mm-hmm. The formula. <laughs> so, but that's that's fantastic. So let's let's talk about um, this. So I... I I don't know if I would ask you this question, but I guess I'm just curious. I've been asking a lot of guests recently about artificial intelligence. Have you been using AI uh, to incorporate into your work recently? The only thing that I use AI for is to describe my pictures. <laughs> there you go. I use AI to describe my images so that I don't have to wait on somebody else to tell me whether something looks the way I want it to. And it's really a game changer in that regard. And I think overall AI to me is a balance, right? It's a tool and it's a tool that can quickly get out of hand if used incorrectly. Mm. Um, and so I personally wouldn't want to use it in my work because then it becomes um, 
not exactly a corruption of the art, but like, it just, it's not, it doesn't feel as authentic to me personally to use AI to create a music or to write music or to like, I understand researching ideas and, and things like that. But I personally just don't feel the need to use it mm. in that way mm-hmm. um, because I feel like it can potentially decrease and take away the value of, of art. And I think that could be detrimental for the industry. And so, um, I you know, I think it's a, I think it's a balance. It's definitely a balance. And there are certain cases in which it makes sense. But I am grateful that anything created by AI cannot be copywritten. I, um, I so agree. that makes me happy. One hundred percent agree, and I got to tell you, as a musician, it's like I do not want I do not want one single bit of artificial intelligence to touch my stuff. There's no, just no way. But I tell you what, use the word tool. It is a great tool. I, you know, I, I yeah. utilize it for um, helping me to rewrite assessments and reports for when I'm doing like my teaching. It's really, Mm -hmm. really useful. I'll have it do like an analysis of all my monthly sessions and help me create like a sort of like a sketch report of what it might look like. And then yeah, that you can then go and edit. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's helpful in those regards. Like it can help you outline things and help you. But like, I think using it fully for things is a very dangerous thing to get into. And I think that could potentially evolve into like dependency to where you know people can't write as well sure. by themselves anymore and people can't so i think that's the danger with any technology really because if you're not using it correctly and you're utilizing it too much and depending on it too much then it can really become an issue i mean here's something wild i mean you look at you know compared to things back in the 70s right when you wanted to know something you go to the library and yeah. pick up a book but with the internet when it came out it's like people probably thought the same thing it's like oh people are never going to be able to learn the same way mm-hmm. this this and that which <clears throat> i mean in in some ways we're seeing a very similar cultural shift with artificial intelligence and how it's being yeah. used right now but it's uh, it's still in its infancy right so where we're going to be in 20 years could be a totally different playing playing field right we just don't know but but that's so cool. You're a music teacher. You you're the president of R A M P D. So let's talk about Ramped. Yes. What is Ramped? What is it? What do they do? So Ramped is a platform that connects the music industry to a global network of disabled music professionals. And so Ramped.org is a you can find a database of hireable, unqualified disabled music professionals. So people can go there and contact whichever professionals that are pro members that are listed. Um, And RAMPT also serves to connect the industry um, with um, accessibility consulting and different things like that. So that, for example, our partnership with the Grammys, um, making sure that the Grammys is accessible. Those are things that RAMPT has been able to consult and work on. We've partnered with Netflix and with Sony and different things like that. so Ramped is, its mission overall is to amplify disability culture, um, promote inclusion, and advocate for accessibility and equity within the music industry. And so all of these things tie into that mission. And, you know, it's the one diversity. Disability is the one diversity that doesn't get talked about in these spaces and in the forefront. And so... I'm really excited to be at the helm of such an important movement and um, I'm really excited to see how we're going to continue to grow and what we're going to continue to do in this industry space. And it's amazing and good for you for being, you know, just a a major spearhead in that advocacy movement and bringing musicians and music professionals uh, all across the industry together. Uh, both in cinema and music and in awards. I mean, it's just, you can't ask for something greater than su- such a community-driven mission. Absolutely. And being disability-led, founded by Lachi, who is an incredible EDM artist, recording artist, disability advocate. She's done so many things. Um, and um, I have her to thank for being where I am. And so, you know, it's just, it's we all 
are a community and working together in collaboration and in community just makes it even stronger. Amen. All right. Where can people find you? Um, uh, my website is preciousperezmusica.com, M-U-S-I-C-A. Um, Precious Perez on Spotify, and then Precious P Musica on X, Precious Perez Musica on Instagram. Um, I'm also on TikTok, same username, and uh, I have a Facebook page. <laughs> I, I have all the things, YouTube everything all the things <laughs> she, she's everywhere just yeah. you, you, you yeah. don't have to you don't have to look too far that's fantastic <laughs> all right so why don't we put a song at the end of the podcast tell us a little bit about this song that you're about to release yeah so the song <laughs> i'm about to release is called rosé and like the wine yes um it's the third of three song of the three songs um, I've been working on with my team at We Could Be Music based in Costa Rica. And it's a very like fall romantic vibe. And um, I'm very excited. Um, it's all of these three songs have been so different, but it's my new era uh, really going into the Latin space, which is where I've always wanted to be. And um I'm just, I'm really excited for this one. There's a visualizer that goes along with it. And um, yeah, I'm very excited about it. So, so in a way, you're a blind Selena, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, similar to probably like Becky G, Carol G, like in the same vein, because if you think about it, like my thing is, right. and it has always been, you know, we think of blind musicians, we think Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder, and they're amazing in their own right. But I'm like, first of all, where are the women and where are the blind women in Latin music and right. in the forefront of the music industry? And so that's that is the path that I'm working to forge and I'm striving to forge for whoever comes after. Oh, so. my goodness. Well, maybe we'll see a Mexican tour sometime. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> tour down That'd Mexico. be dope. Yes. yes. Look at that. All right. Well, Precious Perez, you heard it right here on the Tony Gephardt Show. Please check out the links in the description of this podcast. Her song, Rosé, can be found at the end of this podcast episode, but also please go support her on Spotify. Come on. And uh, check out Ramped, R-A-M-P-D dot org, and all the resources mentioned in the podcast today. Precious, thanks a lot. Thank you. ¿Qué ha pasado y te siento triste pensando en lo que fue? Con tu cara de lunes me dices que nada va a estar bien Ya sabemos, hay espacio en el sofá para no pasar la mal de espera Y llego, dile a los vecinos ya porque vamos a gritar Que esta noche no es para siempre, las emociones se sienten más fuertes Todo lo rico y bueno te mereces Mañana es mañana, hoy te quiero fuerte Los buenos ratos también aparecen Métele fuerte, ya casi amanece Todo lo rico y bueno te mereces Mañana es mañana, hoy te abrazo fuerte Las paredes sirven de testigo No hay frío con el rosé ¿Qué cenamos? Tienes mi cariño De la cabeza a los pies Sofá para no pasar la mal espera y llego Dile a los vecinos ya porque vamos a gritar Que esta noche no es para siempre Las emociones se sienten más fuerte Todo lo rico y bueno te mereces Mañana es mañana, hoy te quiero fuerte Los buenos ratos también aparecen Métele fuerte, ya casi amanece Todo lo rico y bueno te mereces Mañana es mañana, hoy te abrazo fuerte Lo rico y bueno te mereces Hay calor con el rosé Métele fuerte que amanece Hay calor con el rosé Lo rico y bueno te mereces Hay calor con el rosé Métele fuerte que amanece Siempre las emociones se sienten más fuerte. Todo lo rico y bueno te mereces. Mañana es mañana, hoy te quiero fuerte. Los buenos ratos también aparecen. Métele fuerte, ya casi amanece. Todo lo rico y bueno te mereces. Mañana es mañana, hoy te abrazo fuerte.
credits. Lyrics and music. Raquel Gomez, Manuel Monrelo. Music production, Mall on the Mix. Arrangements, Mall on the Mix. Mixing and mastering, Mall on the Mix. Background vocals, Raquel Gomez. Record label, We Could Be Music. Be sure to listen to the song Rosé on the official YouTube channel for Precious Perez, as well as Spotify, Apple Music, and Deezer. Thank you for listening to The Tony Gephardt Show, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.